Two days ago, I finally got access to GPT with internet and all the plugins. That means only one thing, that I still don't have access to Code Interpreter, which is the feature that I wanted more than any other. That is the story of my life. But back to plugins. I've been using them for a couple of days and this is the first time that I have started feeling very, very, very concerned about an AI tool, and I'll explain why. So what are ChatGPT plugins? Plugins essentially let OpenAI interact with APIs defined by different developers. Plugins allow ChatGPT to gather real-time details like sports scores or news, pull information from databases, for example, PDFs, or help users with various tasks such as booking a flight, solving a math problem, etc. In other words, it's supposed to be an app for everything. You can either use a single plugin or group several together, but I believe that grouping might expose your data to a new hypothetical kind of cyber attack. But not to spread any panic, this potential threat isn't specific to GPT plugin users, but could impact the entire AI industry, highlighting the importance of proper education on tool usage. Later in the video, I'll explain what this potential cyber attack might look like. I tried around 50 different plugins and I think that some of them are nice and really easy to use when they work and I'll get to that a little bit later. I'll give you an overview of the best tools in less than one minute. It's a plugin that allows you to interact with YouTube and Dailymotion. You can pass a URL of a video and it can summarize the video for you. It can also give you answers to specific questions about that video. It works well, but it's not always accurate as you can see in the example. Sweet tool when it works. You give it a simple prompt and the plugin rephrases it into a much more powerful prompt. It's supposed to be some sort of a prompt engineer that works for you. If you have a business idea, this tool will help you test the market by researching whether there's a demand for your product or service and how much you could charge, etc. With WebPilot, you can query websites. There's an AI tool for that. You can search for specific AI tools and it will give you a few suggestions. It's a great way to discover new AI tools, but I personally find it frustrating that the links that they're provided don't take you to the tools website instead they take you to the there's an ai tool for that website extra tip if you write use followed by the name of the plugin you'll definitely trigger the plugin otherwise it might not get triggered at all i personally find the whole user experience very uncomfortable you cannot search apps based on the first letter of the name or based on the type of task that they perform and if you actually want to install, for example, a Zillow plugin, you have to click on every page until you find Zillow. I wish they'd given us any guidance on how to prompt once you enable a specific plugin. We're never really sure what the plugin is supposed to do because there's so little information in the plugin store. There's only one sentence that's displayed once you hover over a plugin. And sometimes plugins just don't work because of some internal error. I have serious trust issues when it comes to OpenAI and these plugins made my trust issues actually a lot worse. My issues appeared because of that bug a few months ago that let people see other people's conversations. Apple is a company that continuously embraces innovation and if they aren't letting their employees use ChatGPT, there's probably a good reason for that. First of all, when you as a user open a plugin store, you see around 11 pages with names and logos of each plugin. You naturally assume that these plugins are probably verified because OpenAI has a whole documentation page where they explain how the review process goes and they also have a page with straight terms and conditions. They even have a paragraph where they explain how to make a good plugin and they really want them to be magical. When I installed the Ask Your PDF plugin and another one that's similar to that one, they looked pretty legit in the store. I even saw a lot of people talk about this type of plugin on Twitter. They were installed on the 16th of May. On the 19th of May, they became unverified and right now I cannot even delete them, which is ridiculous. Also, I found some other really dubious plugins in the store. For example, this one, where you declare I am rich and the plugin keeps retrieving the same image over and over again. So I guess I feel pretty confused about the status of plugins. Are these that we see in the store verified? And how come they can become unverified overnight and at the same time you can't uninstall them? However, my biggest concern is privacy. In particular, I'm worried about plugins that allow you to upload a PDF and let you talk to the document. I personally couldn't find a clear privacy policy on that developer's website that will make me trust it with my personal information. 
For example, when you click on their privacy policy, you can see this. So they tell you to refer to privacy policy page even though you are already on that page. Also, they reserve the right to change their policy without any prior notice, which is wonderful. Let's finally talk about the cyber attacks that I mentioned before. Hackers are talking about two things. First, let's talk about indirect prompt injection. It's a hypothetical type of cyber attack that happens when you pass a URL of a website or a YouTube video. The attacker would hide the instructions on the malicious website that you can't see, but your LLM can, and it could, for example, send a history of your chat to the attacker. There is a proof of concept for this attack, and I recommend you watch a video where Johan shows what an indirect prompt injection looks like, and it's less than two minutes long. And finally, cross-plugin request forgery. That's another type of attack where you combine two or more plugins and one of them invokes another one without your permission. Again, in another example, Johan show how by passing a URL to WebPilot plugin with malicious instruction, an attacker could trigger Zapier plugin without your authorization, which might lead to stealing your email, getting access to confidential private information, and so on. Again, I want to emphasize that this is an example of how that attack might look like. It's just a proof of concept. So here are my final thoughts. I think that I will take a break from some GPT plugins that specifically allow chatting with your PDF. I will also not combine plugins that have access to some private data like my email. I will get back to these plugins whenever those developers prove to me that they take issues such as privacy and security seriously. In the meantime, I'll use other AI tools. Currently, there's an abundance of them. And in case you were curious about how you can create your own AI tools, you can check out my latest video. You don't need to have any programming knowledge. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and have a good one.